The Industrial Revolution in the middle 1700s was when the machine-made goods began to spread throughout England. Textiles were hand-woven and took a lot of time, but once the machines were brought to light, they were able to shorten the amount of time needed to complete this task and others. Reform Timeline In 1802, Health and Morals of Apprentices Act limited the workday of apprentices to 12 hours. 1819, Peel's Factory Act Cotton mills cannot employ children under the age of 9. Workdays for children 9 through 16 years old, limited to 12 hours. 1833 Factory Act. 1819 Act extended to all textile mills except silk and lace. Workdays for children 9 to 16 years old, limited to 8 hours. 13 to 18, limited to 12 hours. Children under 13 must receive education for 2 hours per workday, paid for by the worker. 1842 Mines Act. Women, girls, and boys under the age of 10 prohibited from underground work. 1844 Factory Act for textile mills only. Workday for women and children aged 8 to 13 limited to 6.5 hours a day. Children must receive a minimum of 3 hours of education each day. Women forbidden to do night work and limited to 12 hours of work. 1847 Factory Act. Workday for women and children aged 13 to 18, limited to 10 hours per day or 58 hours per week. 1853. A series of acts had gradually extended the franchise in England during this period. These were passed by both parties and helped to strengthen support for the political system in Britain. The 1832 Reform Act had given the vote to the middle classes. Trade unions for skilled workers had grown in strength throughout the 19th century and were made legal in 1871 and given the right to strike. In 1875, they were permitted to peacefully picket their place of work when on strike. Unions for unskilled workers were slow to develop. Throughout the 1880s, there was a, a series of strikes by unskilled workers in an attempt to improve their conditions. The most famous of these were the Match Girls Strike of 1888 and the Docker Strike of 1889, both of which were successful. However, the trade union movement suffered a severe setback with the Taft Vale case in 1901. A union was found to be financially liable for the losses that the Taft Vale Railway Company suffered during a strike. The conservative government took no action. The liberal government brought in the Trade Disputes Act, which declared that unions could not be sued for damages incurred during a strike. This reversed the Taft Vale judgment. Trade unions began to sponsor candidates for par parliament. In 1900, the Labor Res Representation Committee was formed. In 1906, it changed its name to the Labor Party and was led by Care Party. 29 MPs were elected in the election of that year. The Labor Party continued to grow and in the 1920s replaced the Liberals as one of the two big parties in England. The provision of education in England was improved greatly by a series of laws that made a basic education available to all children. The 1870 Education Act, commonly named after its author, W. E. Forrester, set up school districts. Local ratepayers were asked to build a primary school in an area where one did not already exist. Local board had the right to compel children to attend these schools and to charge a nominal fee. By 1874, over 5,000 new schools had been founded. In 1880, education became compulsory up to age 10, raised to 12 in 1899, and 1891 was made free. However, the absence of real reform in the secondary sector meant that education in 1900s was generally up to primary level. Britain lagged seriously behind Germany and France. In 1902, the Education Act, Balfour Act, greatly improved the situation. It provided for the funding of secondary schools out of local rates with helps of grants from central government. In 1907, a scholarship scheme made it possible for the clever children from poor backgrounds to attend secondary school. By 1914, Bern had a well-organized system of education. A number of measures were brought to alleviate the conditions of ordinary people. The Public Health Act of 1872 set up health authorities throughout England. However, the operation of the acts was seriously hampered by a lack of money. A future act in 1875 increased funding and greatly improved the situation. It also brought together a range of acts covering sewage and drains, water supply, housing, and disease. 
Other legislation in this period includes the Artisans Dwelling Act, 1875, which allowed for a large clearance of slums in England. In 1888, local government was introduced to England, and this was further improved upon in 1894. Throughout the 19th century, a series of factory acts had regulated conditions for workers in factories. By the 1870s, workers in Britain had a half day on Saturday, and this led to the growth of organized sports.